Antonio starts right now. We had severe storms earlier this morning, hail did a lot of damage in parts of our area. That's moved on out. Now, wait to see what's coming this afternoon. Some scary moments for people on a flight out of Austin to Germany. We'll have what happened after severe turbulence forced them to make an emergency landing on the East Coast. Three, two, one. Engines full power and lift off of crew six. Go Dragon, go Falcon. And while most of us were snoozing last night, a crew for SpaceX and NASA took an early morning flight to the International Space Station. What they have planned for this mission just ahead. And outside with live cam, we've had showers and storms overnight, and you know that from Mike Osterhage. Right now, things are fairly calm here in the city. Don't see, be surprised if you see flashes of lightning in the distance. What a busy night it has been. You see the radar behind us there. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, the 2nd of March. Thanks for joining us. Uh, that severe weather moving in kind of the overnight hours. Let's go ahead and check back with Mike, who's been tracking it all morning long. Yeah, we had a couple of cells, and boy, they really, really started producing a lot of hail earlier this morning, late last night, down around Dilly. And Justin Horn's going to be showing us all of the KSAC Connect pictures that you have sent in. We've had a lot of reports of damage in and around the area. Baseball sized hail, a lot of reports of hail then just about uh, 45 minutes to an hour ago. Northern Bear County portions of Kamal County. Take a look at radar right now and everything is now definitely settling down around here. We do still have a few storms. We don't have any more severe storms though, any more severe thunderstorm warnings posted. We did have the uh, the latest as this loops on through here. That was Northern Bear County parts of Kendall and then that just kept getting shifted over and over. And as you can see, this is now just continuing to work its way on out of our viewing area in toward Bastrop, Smithville. Now, further up to the north, we've got a couple of uh, still pretty good cells. This one right here in eastern Gillespie County. And I want to uh, show you this may have a little bit of hail associated with it as well. And that's been the, the big problem again there. Yeah, there is a little bit of hail with that cell, and that's going to continue to move off to these. They've been moving very, very quickly this morning at roughly uh, 50 miles per hour. And so they haven't just been sitting in one spot. So that cell there and then the other one back out here in western uh, Kerr County and then also Western Gillespie County. This one may also have a little bit of hail associated with it. No, nope, nothing, just a few uh, lightning strikes, but it is coming down very hard and heavy. At least, like I said, uh, these storms are moving at a fairly good clip, so they're not just going to sit in one spot, continuing to work their way off to the uh, the northeast at sort of roughly 45 to 50 miles per hour. So those will move on out of our area uh, in the, the next, uh, say, half an hour. Now, as far as here in town, got some damp roads in places. We had a little bit of rain that moved on through and on Northern Bear County, of course, you had those heavier storms within the past hour. Mid upper 60s, low 70s. Once again, we are uh, 20 degrees, 25 degrees above the normal low temperature and above the normal high right now. A lot of allergens out there. A lot more oak is showing up in the latest count. This morning, uh, you don't really need an umbrella. I mean, there's leftover storms out there in Gillespie County, but otherwise just cloudy skies, 70 degrees. Don't need a jacket either. This afternoon, we'll have partly cloudy skies. Now we'll start to see some storms developing in portions of the hill country later on this afternoon. Then here in town dinner time early evening is when it turns very, very windy. The wind's going to shift around to the northwest 25, 35 miles per hour and then gusting on top of that. We have got a slew of advisories for this afternoon. There is the severe threat and that covers most all of our area. Bear County, the isolated to even a couple of scattered, potentially severe storms. Most of those will be further up to the northeast. We have red flag warnings that go into effect at noon up until uh, three o'clock tomorrow morning. Winds gusting 50 close to 60 miles per hour in parts of the hill country, less than 20% humidity. Also, we have wind advisories for the western portion of our viewing area. So that front coming on through here, it things are just going to get blown all around later on tonight. After that, nice looking weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike.
Closing arguments for the sentencing phase of a local man found guilty of murder continues later today. Leopoldo Mora shot and killed Kenneth Salazar back in 2021 outside a motel, according to police. Now, the prosecution had evidence in this case that included surveillance footage of the shooting and eyewitnesses who identified Mora as the shooter. The jury only took about an hour to come up with that verdict. Because Mora had prior convictions, his range of punishment is 25 to 99 years or life in prison. Now to a midair scare for passengers on a flight from Austin to Europe. Several people were injured when the Lufthansa flight flying from Austin to Germany hit turbulence. The pilots then making an emergency landing outside Washington, D.C. ABC's Derek Dennis has more. This morning, a midair scare for Lufthansa Flight 469 from Austin, Texas to Frankfurt, Germany, diverted to Dulles Airport outside Washington due to extreme turbulence. Passengers describing items tossed all over the cabin, including food trays. It was kind of like you're in slow motion that you just see everything like like in a movie where you just see everything lift and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden it just comes right back down. Lufthansa Airbus A330 experienced extreme turbulence. The FAA says the flight landed without incident, adding the crew reported encountering severe turbulence at 37,000 feet altitude over Tennessee. Seven passengers were taken to local hospitals, many more shaken up. Approximately 10 patients have been triaged We're in the process of either obtaining refusals and or getting folks transported to the hospital shortly. It's the latest in a series of recent airline incidents. Hawaiian 35, heavy to Canada. Uh, medical personnel uh, at the gate. Oh, yes, we do. Hawaiian 35. Dozens of people were injured in turbulence on this Hawaiian Airlines flight from Phoenix to Honolulu in December. Passengers lurching violently up and down, hitting their heads. This is the very reason that pilots like myself constantly warn you from the cockpit to keep your seatbelt fastened whenever you're in your seat, regardless of flight conditions. Because if we hit something like this and you're not strapped in, you can go flying. That same day, a United flight from Hawaii suddenly dove 1,400 feet, coming within 800 feet of the Pacific before climbing again. The cause of the nosedive not immediately clear. As for the turbulence that hit that Lufthansa flight, the FAA is investigating. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. In the other news this morning, in Pennsylvania, a man is now under arrest, charged with attempting to place an explosive device on an aircraft. It's after his bag triggered an alarm at Lehigh Valley International Airport. The FBI says that suspect, Mark Muffley, checked a suitcase Monday for a flight that was headed to Sanford, Florida. The Transportation Security Administration said one of its officials located a suspicious item inside the suitcase that appeared to be a live explosive device. The FBI says the bag triggered an alarm and officials found what they describe as a circular compound hidden in the lining of the baggage. Sources tell ABC News the device was not operational, was not constructed to go off in flight, but still it's early in the investigation. Severe weather hitting parts of Alabama overnight. Some residents describe hearing tornado sirens and booming thunder as that storm moved in. The powerful wind and rain moved through Huntsville and Decatur as forecasters issued tornado warnings for both cities. Now, the same storms first hammered California, dropping rain, hail, and record amounts of snow. Meanwhile, emergency crews are scrambling to shuttle food and medicine to people in mountain communities east of Los Angeles who are stranded by back-to-back -back winter storms. Authorities say nearly 100 rescues have been performed in San Bernardino County. While you were sleeping, a crew for SpaceX and NASA blasted off overnight, now spending its first morning in outer space. The company and space agency launched their latest mission to the Crew-6 team, with the Crew-6 team rather, to the International Space Station just after midnight. Rocket blasted off from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This launch followed a failed attempt on Monday. Today's launch was the sixth joint crew rotation mission between SpaceX and NASA. It's part of NASA's commercial crew program, which sends the agency's astronauts to the ISS on private spacecraft. 439, 71 degrees. San Antonio Spurs ending their rodeo road trip on a high note. Find out why Doug McDermott is so excited to be back in the Alamo City ahead of tonight's game against the Pacers. And checking Trans Guide, yes, we have wet roads in a few spots from those overnight storms. Right now you're looking at 410 and Old Pearsall Road. That's right, it's a major crash reported there along Loop 410 southbound. The first responders are on the scene. One shoulder lane and one main lane are blocked, but we're going to be checking with our Stephen Cavazos for the very latest.
And outside with live cam, we know some of you are still hearing the rumble of thunder, maybe getting some heavy rain, but Mike says these storms are moving very fast. We'll get an update coming up in a matter of minutes. Our Spurs wrapped up the rodeo road trip and the month of February with a win to snap their 16 game losing streak. It's a franchise record they hope to never see again after losing the first eight games on the trip. Spurs beat the Jazz 102-94 to finish the road trip 1-8. and eight. That's the Spurs first win in six games in just their third of this year. The nine game trip was 6,728 miles. They started February 6th, ended the last day of February. Doug McDermott of the Spurs is very excited to be back in the Alamo City. It's been a while since I've been in that bed, you know, so it's everyone's excited to to get on this plane and get back and we got a quick turnaround and play Indiana coming up. So just get some rest and, you know, check our mail and, you know, uh, it, sh it should be uh, great to be home and um, back in the, the great weather of San Antonio. The guys probably have some laundry to do too, right? I would imagine. Uh, four, four, uh, actually, Spurs are back at the AT&T Center tonight to host the Indiana Pacers at 730. Go Spurs, go. Yeah, go Spurs, go. Time now, 443 and 71 degrees for now. Coming up next, a first look at why a fertility center is facing a lawsuit for implanting an embryo that tested positive for deadly cancer. In this morning's GMA First Look, an IVF tragedy. My sole life purpose was to have a baby that I didn't pass this gene on to. Melissa and Jason Diaz now raising a son with a deadly hereditary cancer gene the couple had sought fertility treatment to avoid. They are now suing California company HRC for allegedly transferring an embryo that had tested positive for diffuse gastric cancer. And then they say the company falsified medical records in an attempted cover-up. Melissa and Jason say their son will Will likely need his entire stomach surgically removed as early as age 15. We followed every step possible so I, mean, that, I never would have thought that we would be in the situation and I never would have thought that you know my son would have this this gene now. And we'll have much more on the IVF lawsuit coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA first look. I'm Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. Let's look out there at the roads with Trans Guide still looking over at that accident at Loop 410 at Old Pearsall Road. This is southbound. You can see the lane blocked over there. We're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos for the very latest in the next half hour. It looks like most of the traffic is actually being diverted mm -hmm. uh, off the highway there. So just to be advised, and what was the direction on this again? On southbound. Southbound. Okay, gotcha. All right, uh, we need to hand it over to our tag team of uh, meteorologist <coughs> Justin Horn and Mike Ostrage. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Hey, good morning to you guys. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me yet, but uh, we're yeah. looking, I look into some of the KSAC Connect photos uh, that we have here uh, that came in this morning uh, around South Texas. This is a uh, photo of me in from no? Philly, nope. uh, where we had near baseball sites here. Uh, that would be guest one. Guest one. Okay. And usually you got to turn it on for it to work, so that would help a little bit. Oh. There we go. Uh, this was some of the larger hail that uh, we saw overnight, uh, baseball size near Dilly. Uh, and we've got several more photos. So KSAC Connect, by the way, a great way for you to send in photos and show us what you're seeing where you are. Uh, this is one of the photos that we got from New Braunfels. That was another area that was fairly hard hit by uh, some of these storms overnight. And uh, here's a look at some of that hail. And this is great when you can use some sort of measuring device to show us how large it is. This is really helpful. So this was about an inch there near Vintage Jokes in New Braunfels. This is another uh, shot of some sizable hill near Jordanton. We had basically two, two, three storms that we were watching. This was the biggest one that came through Dilly and Jordanton. And you can see just how big uh, some of the sail was. This was in New Braunfels near quarter size. That uh, will do a little bit of damage too uh, as, it, uh, as it falls. So there could be some dents in some of the cars up there. But I think the biggest damage is going to be near Dilly. And uh, Katrina Weber is actually headed down there to show us some of the damage a little bit later. Uh, so that's what we had this morning and overnight. Now things are kind of 
moving into a lull, Mike, and it looks like we could get maybe another round this afternoon. Yeah, this afternoon we're going to have to be on the lookout uh, for more severe, potentially severe storms around the area. And uh, right now this is what it looks like on radar. So we had those big storms that popped up and we did have severe thunderstorm warnings. As a matter of fact, as this loops back on through, you can see the last warning that was issued that was uh, had started off there just uh, the far northwest corner of Bear County, and then it just kept getting moved ahead, moved ahead as those storms continued to move on through the area. Here we still have a couple of fairly good cells. Now this one in uh, eastern Gillespie County is just there in northern Blanco County up in toward Marble Falls. However, still got a fairly decent cell which is continuing to kind of blossom up there and heading in toward Fredericksburg. As you can see, there are a lot of lightning strikes associated with that, and I also want to check out and see if there is any hail because like Justin was just talking about, yeah, we do have some hail associated with this storm and some of that could be on the the larger size. We've been seeing a lot of reports quarter size hail as Justin was talking about even bigger than that. So just be on the lookout in Fredericksburg as this storm continues to work its way in your direction. Again, these things have been moving off to the uh, northeast at about 50 miles per hour. So let's uh, put a track on this real quickly here and right there the well we'll go with the uh, center of the hail and up to the northeast again uh, right there at uh, 50 miles per hour so that is going to hit uh, Cherry Mountain right around 518 Eckerd about 530 Willow City about 532 so just be on the lookout for that again with some of that uh, that hail out there. So here in town, got a couple of damp roads from the uh, showers that moved on through mid upper 60s, low 70s, very, very muggy. That's all going to be changing as the uh, day rolls on. So leftover showers around here this morning. Then we are going to see some sunshine hot and humid today breezy out of the southwest. Then once the front moves on through here, the wind is going to shift around. That's going to happen later on just about late afternoon dinner time. We're looking at gusts that are going to be uh, 45 50 miles per hour, even stronger than that. And that's going to be in the overnight hours. Also, as that front moves through, it's going to start to fire up some more showers and thunderstorms that will move on through the area. The majority of those will be off to the east, but we do have the threat for severe weather, even kind of the uh, this would be number one on a scale of one to five, number two. So that's in northern Bear County portions of the hill country heading up toward New Braunfels and San Marcos. So some scattered, potentially strong to severe storms. Also, red flag warnings in behind because of those very strong winds for the western half of our area and wind advisories on top of that. So this is going to be in the lull in the action now through late afternoon. Then things start to really get going in portions of the hill country and then overnight. So 77 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies and a high up to 85 breezy winds out of the west out of the excuse me out of the southeast and then they'll shift around to the northwest once the front moves on through here and that's going to be the situation then overnight into early tomorrow morning. We will be cooler tomorrow morning and then get up into the uh, mid 70s. Beautiful, beautiful weather the next couple of days. However, the humidity is going to make a fairly quick return. Humidity is going to drop like a rock, make a fairly quick return starting Sunday, going into the first part of next week, another front next week. So yeah, get ready for later on today. Dinner time will be interesting. Late afternoon, hill country, dinner time, early evening here in town. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. By uh, 452, rather, 71 degrees. Coming up next, the star of the upcoming Creed 3 film gets a big honor. Plus, why you won't be able to rock and roll all night with Kiss anymore. The Fablemans is getting a lot of Oscar buzz. Plus, actor Michael B. Jordan gets a big honor. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. The lights change how everything looks. It's hard to find our house. When Tony Kushner and Steven Spielberg wrote the Oscar-nominated movie The Fablemans, who did most of the typing? Kushner is up for two Oscars for the film, Best Original Screenplay and Best Picture. The film up for seven Academy Awards. And he says he and Spielberg wrote the story on Zoom while stuck inside their home. I'm a much better typer than Steven is. I'm not a great typist, but uh, Steven really isn't fast. So I did all the typing. But he could see what I was doing, and uh, we were on Zoom, so we could look at each other, and we did it um, three days a week, four hours a day for two months, and we finished the screenplay. <laughs> we'll see if he and Spielberg and the Fablemans win any Oscars March 12th on ABC. Michael B. Jordan! Hollywood's newest star, Michael B. Jordan. He got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame Wednesday. Growing up in Newark, New Jersey, 
the idea of receiving an honor like this was like a dream. But I've always been a dream chaser. You know, never been afraid of hard work. Jordan directed and stars in Creed 3, which is in theaters this weekend. The rock and rolling all night and partying every day is officially coming to an end in December. KISS announcing the dates and locations for the band's final shows on their End of the Road tour, which they say is their last tour ever. It'll end with a two-night stand at New York City's Madison Square Garden, December 1st and 2nd, just blocks from where the band was born 50 years ago. Unfortunately, this crime clashed with the presence of Benoit Blanc. And happy birthday, Benoit Blanc, the former James Bond. Knives Out star Daniel Craig is 55 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. 457, 71 degrees. Popular diabetes treatment could be getting a whole lot cheaper. Up next, why the Biden administration says pharmaceutical companies will soon have to lower their insulin prices. Plus, what's next for the owners of the dogs that police say killed a man here in San Antonio and injured three others. A quick look at the roads with Trans Guide. Here's a look over at I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. Looks like the street there has a sheen to it. We're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. We had a handful of severe storms, a lot of hail damage around the area this morning. Still got one up there in portions of the hill country, but then later on this afternoon, we got that big front moving through here. Get ready for that. And President Biden says pharmaceutical companies will soon have to lower their insulin prices. We're going to tell you why and how much most people will have to pay out of pocket. And not only is weather a main story, so will traffic be after we've got some wet roads out there. We saw some flashing lights earlier. We'll get an update from Stephen Cavazos, who's in the studio. That's coming up. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, March 2nd. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I slept through the night, but I don't know if my area was hit hard. I know some people were hit hard with hail and strong storms throughout the evening. Somebody threw Tic Tacs at my window overnight, <laughs> Mike Osterhage. Yeah, portions of uh, Northern Bear County had a lot of uh, kind of pea uh, marble sized hail, and that was just a couple of hours ago with the cell that moved through down around Dilly, one of the hardest hit areas. And Katrina Weber is uh, heading on down there to uh, take a, to report on some of the damage down there. Had uh, some pictures, and Justin's going to be showing those later on. Baseball sized hail out there. Right now, things have settled out, with the exception up in Gillespie County. I'm going to show you that in a second. 71 degrees. So once again, just like yesterday, very warm, very humid. We are at the normal high temperature right now. 25 degrees basically 20 almost 25 above the normal low it's going to be hot again today hot and humid 85 for a high temperature now the aquifer in yesterday's reading did drop down three tenths of a foot and once again the allergens we've got just a whole grocery list out there oak is starting to show up a bit more as well as we now start getting into the uh, the oak pollen season so now here's what it looks like on radar as of right now and i want to clear out that uh as you can see, the path for that one cell up there to the north of us, and that's the uh, cell that's right there in parts of uh, Gillespie County, and that will continue to work its way up to the northeast at about 50 miles per hour. So these things are moving very quickly. Now a severe thunderstorm warning has just been issued for portions of Gillespie County. This is in effect up until 545. So we have been seeing some hail. That's been the biggest problem with this. So this is going to move through Gillespie County County, Fredericksburg, and then up through northern Blanco County as it continues up to the northeast at about Again, 50 miles per hour. So this the storms are moving along very, very quickly. Here's what it looks like. And I want to zoom in here and then check out as far as radar is concerned. Let me take off the uh, the warning there very quickly. And hail has been one of the biggest issues with some of these storms. This is producing some hail right here. And this is, as you can see, now the uh, intensity of the hail just to the southwest of Fredericksburg. So this storm will continue again to work its way up to the northeast roughly 50 miles per hour, and that's going to affect eastern Gillespie County and then go up into uh, 
the northern Blanco County area. Let me turn on that warning once again. So that's in effect until 545. So for the next uh, roughly 45 minutes, temperatures mid upper 60s, low 70s around the area have a severe threat. This is for later on today, not taking into account what's going on this morning as that front moves on through here. So we've got isolated to scattered, potentially severe storms around a good portion of the area. Red flag warnings go into effect later on today. Winds are going to be gusting high as 50, 60 miles per hour in portions of the hill country. Wind advisories as well go into effect later on today through the evening hour. So the storms are gone this morning throughout much of the area and then that one left over there up in Gillespie County. Then breezy, warm, more storms off to the west later on this afternoon. Then they will continue to work their way across the area into the evening hours. Very windy again, gust 50 miles per hour, higher than that, and a windy start tomorrow. But then beautiful, beautiful weather and a good looking weekend. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on? Well, Mike, uh, we're going to keep a very close eye on Gillespie County. County, uh, especially because that area, unfortunately, there are no trans guide cameras that would be able to show us the conditions, but we can show you the conditions right here along 35 at Weedner. And in fact, traffic here in town is moving without any big trouble. 35 at 10 Marcos, uh, you can see a lot more people making their way out on the roadways. I do want to bring your attention. We did have a major crash that was reported right here along 410 at Old Pearsall Road, and you can see those first responders are still out there. Now, traffic is exiting early, and unfortunately, it has led to some delays for drivers. This is on the southwest side, so let's get a quick look at the map here. You see a little bit of a buildup as you approach Old Pearsall Road. It's not a major buildup because it is still very early in the morning, but if this crash lingers around up until 6 a.m., then it could cause a few more issues for drivers. So hopefully everyone's doing okay out there, but we'll keep a very close eye on that throughout the morning. Now, in terms of uh, here in town, we did keep see some high water reported here along I-10 eastbound near UTSA Boulevard. This is according to TechStat. Uh, it doesn't appear to be impacting drivers that are making their way into the eastbound lanes. In fact, I talked to Justin Horn earlier. It's just to be aware of. So if you are making your way out on the roads this morning, just remember that some roads may be damp or wet out there. Uh, giving you a wide look at the map, really, it's just going to be active construction. And of course, keeping a close eye on a lot of those areas that could be problem spots for commuters. But if you are traveling in this early, I would just say take your time. There's no need to hurry if you're traveling in from Bernie along I-10 eastbound 24 minutes to the downtown area and along 281 southbound from Mulverde it should take about 20 seven minutes or so and 25 along I 35 southbound from New Braunfels. But let's get one last look here at the crash scene along 410 at Old Pearsall Road. Again, traffic is being diverted off of the exit there and hopefully we'll see a better update soon, but make sure to give those first responders plenty of room guys. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, the owners of the dogs that killed a man and injured three other people here in San Antonio are waking up in jail. Abilene Schneider was arrested and charged Wednesday with felony attack by a dangerous dog, causing death and injury to an elderly person by negligence. Christian Moreno, her husband, was arrested on similar charges last Friday. Online criminal records show the couple have a criminal history dealing with theft. Neighbors are frustrated, saying they attempted to get the couple and authorities to get a handle on the dogs to no avail. One neighbor said at one point there were four pit bulls in the house. They say the owners had been told the dogs were getting out of the yard and were terrorizing people. We kept telling them, but every time we talked to them, tried to talk to them, it was nothing but um, they were just cursing at us. San Antonio police arrested Moreno on Friday hours after the attack. Schneider's arrest affidavit, they were able to determine through social media posts that she also claimed that they had been breeding the dogs and training them to be aggressive with meat. San Antonio continues to mourn legendary local artist Jesse Trevino, who passed away just a couple of weeks ago at the age of 76. A mass will be held later this afternoon. Friends and family paid their respects at a rosary service last night at Sacred Heart Catholic Church. Trevino is known and beloved for his vivid paintings seen throughout the city. Significant financial relief is on the way for millions of Americans battling diabetes. That's after a drug maker has now slashed some insulin list prices by up to 70 percent. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with why President Biden is taking some credit for the move. This morning, President Biden taking a victory lap after the largest manufacturer of insulin in the U.S. announced that diabetics who use its insulin should now expect to pay no more than $35 a month for the life-saving medication. We finally beat Big Pharma. 
because we stuck together. President Biden praising the move by drug maker Eli Lilly, highlighting the fact that last year he signed into law the Inflation Reduction Act, which caps insulin prices for seniors on Medicare at $35 and has spent months calling on pharmaceutical companies to also lower prices for everyone else. The president suggesting Eli Lilly's decision could be a game changer. 35 bucks. But guess what that means? Every other company making insulin is going to have to lower their prices to 35 because they can't compete. Out of the nearly 8.5 million Americans who use insulin, nearly 3 million rely on Eli Lilly products. And as prices for the life-saving medication have skyrocketed, many diabetics have been forced to make dangerous decisions to save money. He would be able to successfully do what one-fourth of all type 1 diabetics do, and that was ration his insulin until payday. And unfortunately, he lost that that game of Russian roulette, I guess. A recent poll by the Kaiser Family Foundation found that a slight majority of Americans want Congress to put capping insulin costs on its list of top priorities. We're doing this completely voluntarily because it's, it's time and it's the right thing to do. And President Biden, as recently as this week, called out Republicans for blocking his proposal to extend a $35 insulin cap to everyone. This could potentially become a campaign issue if the president decides to join the 2024 presidential race. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. 510, 70 degrees. Still ahead, why Airbnb is reportedly banning people who are likely to travel with already banned guests. Up next, why a hospital that serves the San Antonio Southside is closing its doors after nearly 40 years. Let's look out there with live cam. Humid 70 degrees to start your morning. Uh, some areas got some hell overnight, and some areas will be see seeing some interesting changes this evening. We'll be checking in with Mike later on. The only hospital that serves San Antonio Southside is closing its doors. Texas Vista Medical Center, formerly known as Southwest General Hospital, will shut down on May 1st. It has been serving the Southside for nearly 40 years. Texas Vista is a 342-bed medical facility and the only hospital in City Council's District 4. This hospital offers critical emergency care and OBGYN care for the San Antonio area, and it is also a significant provider of behavioral health care in this region. I just don't think people in San Antonio as a whole understands what, how this impacts the South Side because not only does it provide a level of care for a significant level of care, it provides really good employment for a lot of people on this side of town. It is important to note that the Texas Health and Human Services say they received the closure notification and say a hospital is required to notify them in writing of the closure. It also has to include where medical records will be stored. 515, 70 degrees. Still ahead, we're going to tell you when Tesla will begin allowing non-Tesla vehicles to use select supercharger stations. And checking Transguide right now, looking at 410 and Old Pearsall Road. Two thumbs up from Stephen Cavazos. We'll talk to him coming up a little bit later on. Your record label is taking off, but so is your sound engineer. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. Ubrelvi helps you fight migraine attacks. You won't take a timeout. One dose of Ubrelvi quickly stops migraine in its tracks within two hours. Do not take with strong CYP2A4 inhibitors. Most common side effects were nausea and tiredness. Ask about Ubrelvi the anytime, anywhere migraine medicine. Hate it when a car freshener hits you with an overwhelming blast of perfume? Febreze car vent clips work differently. Febreze gives you consistent freshness that starts just right and stays just right for 40 days. Upgrade to Febreze car. Think mom's mad about her favorite shoes? Nope, because Bank of America lets her switch her choice cashback category to online shopping, so she earns more on a replacement there. With the Bank of America customized cash rewards card, you just can't stop getting rewarded. 
Time check 518 and we have better news to report out here along 410 at Old Pierce. So let's get a wider look at Transguide. Now earlier we did have a crash that was reported that was causing some issues for drivers and right now it does appear that crash is already cleared out and traffic is moving without any trouble, but there is lots of traffic still out there along Loop 410. Check out those southbound lanes. We still have a little bit of a slowdown and that just could be residual uh, traffic that's moving through the area. So I expect that we will be in the green very shortly there, but nonetheless drive safe. We can expect that some of the roads may be damp or wet out there. Do want to take you to an area where we have been tracking this very closely along I-10 eastbound at UTSA Boulevard. Now earlier we reported that TxDOT has said that there is high water out there and at this time they have at least three lanes that are blocked off. But the good news is traffic that is moving along the eastbound lanes of I-10 is moving without any trouble out there. Wider look at the map does show thankfully it's still pretty quiet here in the metropolitan area, but it is still very early in the morning so we can expect things to get moving, but I would say probably in the next hour or so. Thankfully, we do have better news to report out here at 410 at Old Pearsall Road. A look around town shows 35 at San Marcos. Yeah, the commute is getting a little bit busier, but thankfully, Mike, some of the issues we saw here in town have dwindled down. Just when things had settled down, then this cell has now definitely popped up here in Gillespie County and it has become severe. There is a severe thunder, <clears throat> excuse me, severe thunderstorm warning in effect up until 545. And this is for Gillespie as well as Blanco County. This storm is moving off to the northeast at approximately uh, 50 miles per hour. And the uh, biggest problem with this, and let me take off the, uh, out, the outline for the severe thunderstorm warning, as you can see, there's numerous lightning strikes here, but also, and this has been the situation with these storm cells from earlier this morning, and we're getting a lot of hail, and there are some reports of at least inch diameter hail that is prompting the severe thunderstorm warning. So that hail core right there is going to continue to work its way just about right through Fredericksburg. I'm just going to put this into motion very quickly, and you can see how this hail will continue to move off to the to the northeast. So once again, there is the uh, severe thunderstorm storm warning in effect for Gillespie County. This does include Fredericksburg up until 545. So for the next 25 minutes, this will move off to the northeast. Elsewhere, things have definitely started to settle down, but hail is definitely the issue earlier this morning. A lot of reports of that and a lot of great uh, KSAC Connect pictures. Justin Horn has that. What's going on, Justin? Yeah, you're right. These were big hail producers in some cases down towards Dilly. We got some massive hail. This is a video that's coming out of San Antonio. And uh, what we can see here is uh, some heavy rain, a little bit of street flooding. And then I know it's kind of hard to see, but there is some small hail that's coming down there. So uh, even here in town on the northwest side, we had some reports of some smaller hail, maybe up to quarter size. And then the, the bigger hail was down there near Dilly. And we also saw some reports coming out of Timberwood Park in New Braunfels. What I'm going to do here is switch over to our KSAC Connect feature. And I can show you some of these larger hailstones. Look at this one. I mean, almost the size of a baseball there. And this did do some damage down in Dilly, on the northwest side of Dilly. We believe some car windows broken, maybe some house windows there. Uh, we're going to get some reports coming out of Dilly here pretty soon. But that was some of the larger hail that we saw. And then we go up to New Braunfels, close to one inch hail, about quarter size there. Uh, it was loud, probably woke you up. Uh, these were some big storms that came through last night. We've got an opportunity for some more storms this afternoon. And to talk more about that, let's toss it back over to Mike. Yeah, that's that. Thank you very much, Justin. That's that uh, big front that's going to be moving through here later on today. Temperatures out ahead of it. Once again, we're just like yesterday, mid upper 60s, low 70s. We are at what the normal high is. A ton of humidity out there, and that's making the atmosphere very, very unstable. So we've got a few of those leftover showers, thunderstorms, Gillespie County. Then temperatures stay pretty steady. We are going to make it up into the mid upper 70s today at noon. 85 then for a high temperature. It is going to be breezy. Now, it looks like the timing of this front may be slowing down just a bit. We stay very warm and humid out ahead of it. This is right around six o'clock tonight. It's still not through here in town as of yet, but it will be moving through the hill country. Then it's going to come through in the early evening hours. The wind shifts around and that's when things really get going. Now, not only the windy conditions and the high fire danger, but as the front moves on through here, it is going to be touching off more showers and thunderstorms out in portions of the hill country. Those will move across the area and continue off to the east. We do have the threat for severe weather then later on tonight isolated to scattered strong to severe storms high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with that also red flag warnings then starting later on 
at noon today out there in the hill country, the western southwestern half of our area, and of course the wind advisory three o'clock up until midnight. So it is definitely going to be a very interesting evening as far as that goes, not only with the potential for severe weather, but also the high fire danger and the very strong winds. We're going to see be seeing wind gusts 45 50 miles per hour, even higher than that at times. 77 at noon, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature today. 85 storms will start to develop out to the west late this afternoon and then it's going to winds going to shift around. It's going to become breezy this afternoon, but then the winds will shift around later on this evening and then it's going to be windy overnight and early tomorrow morning down to 48 75. Great looking weather then once the winds settle down tomorrow, plenty of sunshine all the way through the weekend. The humidity will come back in here fairly quickly then to start off next week. More after this. In today's Tech Bites, careful who you're hanging with if you're using Airbnb. Vice reports the company is banning people who are closely associated with already banned guests. Airbnb calls it a necessary safety precaution after years of rentals turning into party houses. The Postal Service is going electric. The agency is buying more than 9,000 Ford E-Transit EVs and 14,000 EV chargers. It's part of a plan to build out the Postal Service's charging infrastructure over the next year. The goal is to hit at least 75 locations. And Tesla has officially opened some of its charging stations to everyone, allowing non-Tesla owners to charge their electric vehicles. Drivers can pay per charge or get a monthly membership at a discount. About half a dozen stations are available for non-Tesla drivers in New York, but many more are soon expected. So either way, if you don't pay, you won't be charged. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 527 on this busy Thursday morning, 70 degrees. A flight from Pennsylvania headed to Orlando is disrupted after bomb type materials were found in a suitcase by TSA agents just ahead what prosecutors are hoping to show during the suspect's court appearance later today. Ready to double down on your next potential heart attack? You're in luck because KFC is bringing back a fan favorite. We'll tell you when. Plus how Ford is looking into a patent that could allow your next vehicle to just drive itself to the junkyard if you don't make your car payments on time. Making headlines this morning, a man accused of trying to get an explosive on board a Florida-bound aircraft will appear in court later today. Just ahead, how TSA was able to stop him before he got on board. Let's look out there with a live cam, a humid, calm 70 degrees in this shot. But of course, Mike and Justin have been busy all morning tracking that overnight storms. And truly team coverage here on GMSA as Justin Horn joins us at the desk here. Good morning, guys. It's Thursday. It is March 2nd. Thanks for joining us. Very busy. Yeah, you know, we, the, the focus this week has been on what's going to be happening later on this afternoon. But yep. uh, overnight, I mean, some of those storms, there was one little indication yesterday, and boy, it, it lived up to it. It was just a couple of isolated severe storms, but they put down some big hail. So that's what we've been covering this morning. We've been looking at the pictures on KSAC Connect. And by the way, that's the best way for you to show us what's going on where you are. Send in those pictures. You can do that with the KSAT app, the KSAT weather app, and online as well. All right, we're going to show you all those in a second. We do have one severe storm up there in Gillespie County as of right now. First of all, here in, first of all, there is that storm. And as you can see, the uh, outline for the severe thunderstorm warning, which is eastern Gillespie County into northern uh, Blanco County, and then up there toward Marble Falls in effect for the next 15 minutes up until 545. And I'm going to take the warning off there and just to show you the movement. These are, have been moving very, very fast, about 50 miles per hour up to the northeast. And as you can see, a lot of lightning strikes there, very intense rain. And then one of the issues, and this is what we were just talking about, that has been uh, really the, the deciding factor as far as uh, becoming severe is the hail. And you can see that hail core right there that just has moved through Fredericksburg. And we do have reports of it least inch diameter hail. That is what is constitutes a severe storm, one inch diameter hail or 60 mile per hour winds. So that hail core right there and that will continue to work its way up to the northeast as you can see how that did develop and that's when that storm did become severe. So again, this is going to work its way up to the northeast at 50 miles per hour and continue on out of our area. Now there's nothing else in behind that as of right now. We might have a couple of little leftover showers but again, this is the last of the storms. We had many of them earlier this morning as well.
as we were talking about. Then we got to look out for what happens later on today. Mid upper 60s, low 70s, identical to yesterday morning as far as temperatures, as far as the humidity, and we're going to make it up to 85 later on today. Wind is going to be now this is later on after dinner early evening here in town when it shifts around to the northwest 25 35 miles per hour then gusting on top of that 40 45 50 mile per hour winds we're going to make it up to 85 degrees for a high temperature and it will be windy out ahead of that that uh, front and we will see some storms developing later on today we have got at least three advisories covering most of the area going to get that all sorted out in just a couple of minutes and also talk about what's in store after that big front moves through later on tonight Night, looking ahead to the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, any problems out there, sir? Well, we still have that high water that's been reported here. My 10 at UTSA Boulevard. Let's get a wider look at Trans Guide, show you exactly what first responders are doing out there because at this time they've blocked at least three lanes of traffic at this point, and it's not really impacting the commute along the eastbound lanes of I 10, but you could see that it's obviously a busy route for a lot of these drivers that are making their way through the area. So it's safe to assume that this area we can see some wet roads out there and Steph had pointed it out a little bit earlier, a little bit of sheen as well. So just drive safe if you're traveling through I 10 and again that is reported in the eastbound lanes as you approach UTSA Boulevard. Now again, the good news is it's early enough to where we're not seeing a big buildup of traffic, but it is early, so we'll have to watch these areas closely. Now giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area. Thankfully, it's the same story we see every morning. Plenty of green out there here in town, but still we have several active road closures that will take place. Place. We'll get to that a little bit later on if we have time, but let's talk about these travel times because we know that it's going to take at least 28 minutes to get to the Alamo City if you're traveling in along I 37 northbound from Pleasanton and it's the usual drive time from Castroville. So take your time there. US 90 eastbound should be about 30 minutes and your arrival from Lytle about 16 minutes long I 35 northbound. But let's get it back here at 10 at UTSA Boulevard where we still have those first responders. Remember, at least three lanes are blocked off due to high water reported in the area. We're going to continue to travel track the roads closely and hopefully we'll see some improvement as the morning does go on. Mark. Yeah, you can see that giant puddle out there right now. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, to our top stories, a Pennsylvania man accused of trying to take explosives onto an airliner is scheduled to appear in court later today, according to the FBI. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, there were no injuries during Monday's incident, but some analysts say the suspect could be facing some serious legal issues. A flight from Lehigh Valley International Airport headed to Orlando was disrupted Monday after bomb-type materials were uncovered in a suitcase as it went through TSA. Court documents say investigators found a circular compound around three inches in diameter wrapped in a wax-like paper and clear plastic wrap hidden in the lining of the luggage. Authorities also recovered other items, including a can of butane and a lighter. It was hidden. It was, you know, the fuse was secreted in the lining of the suitcase. So it's an indicator that Mr. Muffley um, allegedly knew that he wasn't supposed to be bringing that on an airplane. According to court documents, the baggage belongs to Mark Muffley, who was caught on security cameras leaving the airport after TSA agents paged him over the intercom system to report to security. Every place where this gentleman could have gotten caught at the airport in the airport process seems to have stood up and worked uh, as intended, which is a, definitely a good sign. The 40-year-old Muffley was arrested Monday night without incident by the FBI. He did two things that a suspect should never do. He concealed the device, concealment is evidence, and then he fled the airport and flight is evidence. So I think those two factors will mitigate against him. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The U.S. Senate has passed legislation that could reveal more information about the origins of COVID-19. Lawmakers passed the COVID Origins Act of 2023 by unanimous consent last night. This legislation would ask the government to declassify intelligence on the pandemic's origins. That includes any information related to any potential links between the virus and the Wuhan Institute of Virology in China. This is the second time Senate has passed legislation about COVID-19's origins. The Biden administration has approved an estimated $619 million potential arms sale to Taiwan. It includes missiles for F-16 fighter jets and related equipment. The move will likely further inflame already heightened tensions between the U.S. and China. The administration formally notified Congress yesterday of the proposed sale. 
As grocery prices continue to climb, Americans that need help the most are about to get less money to buy food. More than 42 million Americans receive help from the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, which is a official name for what is commonly referred to as food stamps. Food stamp recipients are set to receive $90 less per month on average. It's because for three years now, people who got SNAP benefits received extra funds for food as part of a pandemic hunger relief program. Congress voted to end those pandemic emergency allotments, and they officially stopped this month in 32 states. In other states, they have already ended. Time now, 538 and 70 degrees for now. You ready to double down again? Up next, we'll tell you when KFC is bringing back its legendary fried chicken enriched sandwich. And if you miss too many payments on your Ford vehicle, up next, we're going to tell you how Ford is trying to make it possible for your vehicle to just drive off and repossess itself. We are living in strange days, people, <laughs> that's for sure. 539 as we go outside with Live Camp. Tough to see the downtown skyline. You can barely make out the Alamo Dome there on the lower right side of your screen. Ton of moisture in the air right now. Storm still moving through parts of our area. We'll get the very latest coming up. In your morning consumer headlines, Ford has applied for a patent for technology that lets vehicles repossess themselves. If owners ignore warnings about missed payments, the system starts with disabling features such as GPS, air conditioning, cruise control, and the radio. And it could emit irritating sounds when the driver is there. Next, it could lock the owner out. If the owner still doesn't act, the vehicle may drive itself to a spot for a tow truck to pick it up or to impound lot repossession agency or lending institution. Now, if repossession costs more than the vehicle is worth, it could drive itself to a junkyard. Unbelievable. Hey, KFC is bringing back the KFC Double Down after a 10-year hiatus. It's probably taken that long to recover from your previous heart attack. The sandwich has two fried chicken fillets oh my as the bun. <laughs> It'll be available for a limited time starting March 6th, which is coming up here in a couple days. The Double Down made its debut back in 2010, and they sold more than 10 million of them. It reappeared briefly in 2014. KFC said fans have been clamoring for its return, so the chain is answering the call by bringing it back again. Well, and so here's the positive. There's no bread. No. So it's true. like it's it's all protein, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, <laughs> is that is that considered gluten free, Jamie? Or I guess I guess because uh, it's fried, it messes. All the flowers in the batter. All oh, the flowers in the batter. That's yeah. True. Okay. Well, wishful thinking. Okay, it's 543, 70 degrees. The San Antonio Humane Society is coming up next, and they have a very special pet that needs a new home. 
and we're keeping an eye on the roads. Obviously, uh, things look pretty good here in town. It's the outlying areas where we've had severe storms and strong storms overnight. Uh, Cam Fredericksburg, you just got hammered. We're tracking storms outbound. We'll talk to Stephen and Mike coming up. Well, look at the, oh, now you're the now loser I'm up, up yeah. here. Yes, Kim's here from the San Antonio Humane Society. Who's that little this baby? This is Juju. Hi. Well, good, well, Juju. Sam, so just try and get used kiss. to all the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not this morning, so a little <laughs> sleepy, just a little. A uh, little terrier mix? Yeah, little terrier mix, but um, definitely going to be a little bit bigger of a dog. Not um, huge dog. Not huge dog, about yeah. three months old right now, but you can tell like with the paws. Mm -hmm. um, definitely is going to want to play on our way over, was talking to us, was wanting to get out, so and yeah. short coat, easy to take care of. Definitely. Perfect. Little walking, jogging partner. Yes, so. yeah, definitely be outside. What y'all got going on? So we Hi. are partnering with Peter Piper Pizza on our pause for pizza and on Thursday any Peter Piper location they're giving 15% back um, so go get lunch go get dinner go see them mention the SA Humane Society and 15% comes back to all of our sweet pets for pause for pizza really yeah just be great yeah just show up and, and tell them you're here for San Antonio Humane Society oh that's a fantastic idea yeah Would you eat like some pizza? pizza for this little guy like pepperoni pizza dude <laughs> Well, if you'd like more information about the uh, Peter Piper Pizza and 50% yeah. back or you know, Juju and all the other puppies over there and kitties, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461, sahumane.org. Thank you, dear. Thank you. All right, let's get another look around town. 35 at Salada Creek, 35 at Weedner. Traffic is moving, and we can expect it to get a little bit busier as we approach 6 a.m., but let's get a quick look around town. If you plan on heading out the door in the next few minutes or so, 35 at San Marcos is not a bad shot, but you can see we have a lot more folks out there as we get closer to that 6 a.m. hour. 37 at Fair Avenue looks pretty quiet, though, so I would say those north and southbound lanes aren't too bad. But, of course, we're still keeping a very close eye on some of those areas where high water was reported and also road debris. So this is the latest according to Textile. This has been reported near I-10 westbound near I-35. You have to watch out because it does look like there's some debris on the roadway that could impact traffic. Nothing major at this hour and it's still early, so no big slowdowns, but still again, uh, use some caution. Do you want to take a jump over here to I-10 eastbound as you approach UTSA Boulevard? I'm still seeing some first responders out there that have at least three lanes blocked off due to high water that's been reported. But other than that, it has been quiet here in town as we give you a wide view of the metropolitan area. Just plenty of green out there, but that's expected to change as more people get the commute rolling here. We're going to continue to track the roads closely, but there's a look at the high water that's been reported at 10 at UTSA Boulevard. Again, three lanes blocked off, but I would say at this time, Mike, it's not really causing a huge delay with traffic, at least just yet. All right, thank you very much, sir. And uh, we still have one leftover severe storm, and it's this one up here in Gillespie County. And notice how the original severe thunderstorm warning did expire at 545, and then a new one was issued, and that's the extreme eastern portion of Gillespie County, and then also going into northern Blanco County. And again, I'm going to lose the uh, outline for the warning right there. And just to show you, not only very intense rainfall right there, but this thing has a history of producing hail and still two different hail cores right there. So this is working its way up in toward northern Blanco County and will continue to work its way up to the north and northeast and a lot of lightning strikes associated with that as well. These storms have been notorious for big hail producers. We had a bunch overnight. Justin has more uh, KSAC Connect pictures. What's going on, Justin? Hey there, Mike. Yeah, we, we want to share with you some pictures, some pictures you shared with us of the hail overnight. The biggest hail was down near Dilly. That was with the initial storm that was just after 10 30 or so and this picture uh, shows just how big the hail was near baseball size and we did get some damage down there reports of windows being broken and those sort of things so uh, that was uh, last night uh, the big hail with the first storm and then we got a couple more storms this morning that produced some smaller hail but Still sizable in some cases. This is out of San Antonio. This was mostly small, but you can see it collected there on the, the mat. This was some larger hail in New Braunfels near one inch size and even bigger yet. This was down near Jordanton with that initial storm. Uh, but you can see just how large it is. And when you do send in these hail photos, it always helps to give us something to compare it to, like a quarter. This is a great example here. This was out of Canyon Lake or northwest side of New Braunfels where Looks like we got some quarter size hail there, and that can do a little bit of damage. Great photos. We love the photos. You can send them in 
to KSAT Connect on our website, on the KSAT Weather app, and on the KSAT app as well. We'll continue to show you a few more photos as they come in this morning. But we've got that chance for more storms this afternoon, Mike. Yes, indeed. So get ready to take some more pictures later on uh, and then going into tonight as well as in the overnight hours. So fairly tranquil out there right now. We did, of course, not only uh, had those large uh, storms, severe storms down around Dilly and then the latest one up in Gillespie County, but the one that moved through northern Bear County earlier, and that's what uh, dumped all that rain right out there around 10 UTSA Boulevard that uh, Stephen was showing. So temperatures right now are at the normal high, mid upper 60s. We've got a ton of humidity out there, and that's just making the air that much more volatile, setting the stage for the big front to move through later on today. Leftover rain out there this morning, then we will make it up through the 70s later on today, and then top off at 85 this afternoon with some sunshine out there. It's going to get breezy out ahead of that front. Wind out of the south, uh, southeast about 20-25 miles per hour. Then we're going to start to see some of those thunderstorms developing out in the hill country later on. Here's the uh, timing of the front, and it looks like it has started to slow just a bit. Initially, it looked like it was going to be dinner time here in town, but now it's going to be into the early evening hours and by news time tonight and then approaching midnight, then we are going to be well into that much, much drier. Dew points will be dropping off 40, close to 50 degrees. Winds are going to be howling out of the northwest. We're going to see gusts close to 50 miles per hour, even higher than that. And as the front starts to work its way through here late this afternoon, showers, thunderstorms develop in the hill country, continue to work their way to the east. This is early evening and then further on off to the east. And some of those may become strong to severe. So a couple of days ago, if you recall, we were barely on the fringes of the isolated potential severe storms for today. But over the course of the past couple of days, Storm Prediction Center has continued to kind of expand this westward. So most of the area is covered by the threat for some sort of severe storm tonight. High winds, hail being the biggest threats. An isolated tornado off to the east, especially, can't be completely ruled out. Not very likely, though. Very strong winds. Red flag warning is going to affect noon up until 3 o'clock tomorrow morning for the western half of our area. Right there along 1037 is the boundary for that. And then the wind advisory also. So again, winds are just going to be howling out there. Dew points drop off considerably, obviously, in behind this front. And it's going to be fantastic for pretty much all the weekend. And then the humidity comes back in here to start off next week forecast today. So we've got the leftover rain eastern Gillespie County this morning, then a lull in the action. 77 at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 85 today. Still very humid and those storms will start to develop out in the hill country and then the wind shifts around into the early evening hours, obviously sooner in the hill country with that front moving on through here. Down to 48 tomorrow, so we will be cooler. Still very windy. Now this time tomorrow morning, winds will be easing up somewhat, but in the Overall, overnight hours very breezy, 75, and then good looking weekend. Thank you, Mike. 554, 70 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We start with pick three, 402, Fireball nine, daily four, 3460, Fireball one. Cash five, 4, 18, 21, 26, 27. Lotto Texas, 347, 15, 34, 45. And Powerball 2, 9, 28, 36, 53. Powerball four, power play two. Good morning and coming up right here on Good Morning America, we're tracking the massive winter storm and it's more than winter weather across the country with 90 million people on alert. Plus, Michael is live in Easter Island with the music, the culture and reporting on the threat from climate change, how it's impacting those famous statues and the island, plus how plastic is polluting that paradise. And we're celebrating women run businesses with a double dose of deals and steals. That's all right here on GMA. 5.57 on a very busy Thursday morning. We're still tracking storms, and Stephen is watching the roads right now. Flashing lights, I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. There is still a large pond of water on the left side of the freeway in that area. Much more to come.